Hi, I'm Chris James and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today we have an amazing treat. You see how I broke that word down into like 17 syllables? Um, we, we uh, Stephen and I flew down to Atlanta to have a conversation with Stephen, what would you what would you call this this special person we're bringing on? Your your protege, your your student. Man, uh, I would I would probably call her my my protege because a student is usually someone who I think learns and then will use the information for themselves. But I, I believe like a protege would be someone who's going to learn the information and then apply it to, of course, use it for themselves, but to then teach others as well. So definitely protege. Nice. All right. So we're going to be having a talk with Steve's protege. I want to welcome Jasmine to the show. Hello, everybody. AHA family. Thank you for having me. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy and you just become a better person. We need to start focusing more on the individual. All right, so Jasmine, yes. you, you've seen the videos. You already know how this is going to go, right? We want to talk, talk a little bit about your history. Uh, we want to see, like, when did you first come across AHA? So we're going to get into all of that as well as talk about, you know, what your experience was like working with Steve. And of course, we're going to talk to Steve and see, you know, how did Steve make this happen? Now, why do y'all need to be watching this particular interview? We're going to just we're just going to get it out there all out in the open real quick. Jasmine, over the course of five months, are y'all ready for this? Lost a hundred pounds okay now that's so significant because Stephen also over the course of what five months six months lost 100 pounds but that's the second time he's done it so so if y'all are interested you you see the transformations you know you see people losing all this weight and you're like how are people losing all this weight in such a short period of time yo today we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of it. So once again, welcome Jasmine, let's get into this. All right, so Jasmine, first of all, we need to go back, right? We gotta figure out where did Jasmine come from? Where was she mentally when she wanted to start this health journey? So how long have you been on your health journey? And, and tell us like, where were you mentally? Well, I've been on my health journey um, a really long time. Um, on and off, but the consistency of it has never been there. But when I did discover a healthy alternative in February of 2019, I was just kind of really not in a great place, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, and you know, the universe just brought this channel to me. And I watched all the videos, literally all the videos. <laughs> within the month of um, February and just everything resonated with me, just everything that Chris said in the videos. Um, it just all just felt so natural and it just like made perfect sense to me. So uh, prior to that, um, I've tried, you know, different ways to lose weight from like taking prescription medications that suppresses your appetite. Um, I did something called HMR, which is like protein shakes and the little fake food basically and I'm consistent with everything that I start but then if you don't change your whole lifestyle as we all know you know you gain the weight back so that's you know always been the case and I've always been just kind of heavier naturally but I just kind of reached like an all-time high in um, February of 2019 so that is um that's part of the health journey. Well, well, tell me, tell me this. What what was your starting weight when you when you originally kind of decided to make this change? When I decided to make the change and commit, um, I was two eighty. So that that's my highest weight, and that was when I weighed myself on March first, twenty nineteen, to start my very first water fast. That's what I weighed in. Yeah. So so um, that's I mean. 
So, so you said that you've always been bigger. So were you bigger as a child as well? Like, yeah, I was, I mean, I was nine pounds, 14 and a half ounces when I was born. So I was almost oh, wow. 10 pound baby. So, okay. you know, and just kind of just growing up, you know, I've just always just been like heavier. I just mm. wasn't slim. So, um, so, yeah. so you, you would be what they would call, or some people would say big boned, right? That, that's what people would say, right? Because you've, you've just been, you've been on the heavier side your whole life, even when you were a baby. And so you would have the, the easy excuse, you know, I'm just big boned. Yeah. And clearly we can see that you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> right. And at one point in time, I would have said that too, but I've come to learn that that is not even a thing. These bones so. are just thick. Right. See, see, that's the reason why I said this is going to be such a great interview because so many people, especially women, they'll be like, oh, you know, men lose weight faster. It's easier for them. Or, you know, they'll, they'll tell me, Chris, you've always been kind of slim anyway. Like, there's all these reasons why what we did isn't going to work for them. But you are literally the example of, listen, I've been dealing with weight all my life. Might have caught myself big boned at one time and slimmed down, put in the work. And you clearly can see that your skeletal size is a normal size. So <laughs> exactly. All right. Now, you, you, you're probably one of the only people that I believe when they actually say, yeah, I've watched all your videos uh, because most people just say that, but I believe you, you are, you are, you're something special. You know what I mean? So um, what, like, what caused you to want to reach out to Steven? Because, you know, we've got the videos available. You watched all the information. Like, how did you and Steven link up? Um, well, how I got to that point initially when I did do the my first water fast for 21 days in um, March of 2019 I lost 40 pounds and I was able to keep that off and then you know my plan was to continue and lose more but you know life etc and by well it was November of 2020 so I saw Steven on a video in September um, around September 27th of 2020, he came, he like reappeared and he was in a video and I was just like, oh my gosh, Steven, cause you know, one of my favorite interviews that, um, Chris has done is with Steven when he lost 132 pounds in 10 months. So that really resonated with me so much. And I'm just like, wow. And then in Steven's September video, I thought I maybe kind of heard him say he did coaching. I wasn't for sure, but I just <laughs> thought that because I know, you know, he talks about the 40 day upcoming wellness program and how you dig deep, dive deep. So I, you know, reached out to him and was just like, um, hey, and this wasn't until October. You know, I'm really ready to like recommit. I really would like a coach. I really want to go hard. I want to get you know, the rest of this weight off. And I think you do coaching. So can you please just like, let me know. Cause I'm like, you know, dedicated, determined, dependable. I'm going to do this. And, um, yeah, okay. that's how I have it. So Steve, what was it about Jasmine? Because, but prior to, you know, working with her, had you done much like one-on-one -on -one coaching and what was it about Jasmine that, yeah. Did, I mean, did she seem special to you? Like, what were your kind of your th first thoughts? So, um, I mean, I'd done a little bit of uh, a little bit of coaching. Uh, it was most of it was uh, like one-on-one -on -one consultations, but they'd be you know an hour here. Um, you know, I had uh, one person that I had in a thirty-day program that was you know primarily around you know, force fasting and weight loss. So when she reached out to me. I had a program in place, and but my my program that I had in place was not particularly designed to be for five or six months. It was really particularly designed to be for thirty days, which was going to be like four sessions. That's what I put it together for. And the the part the, the time that I knew that she was special in particular was she would she would show up on time. She would take notes the entire time. Like she literally would hang off of every one of my words and she remembered everything I said, which make, you know, held me accountable. Uh, it also caused me to do more. So um, 
just just as we started to go through that first month, that's when I realized that she was going to be a uh, someone special um, because she was literally doing things with me step by step. And I've had plenty of people that have, are like, yeah, Stephen, I want to I wanna coach with you. I want to work with you. I want to fast with you. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I bring them on. And then two weeks later, they just fall off. They dissipate. Uh, and then after month one, she was there. And then she was like, well, we did great. Can I get like two more months? And I'm like, I don't even have a program for two more months. But I guess we can figure it out, right? So, um, of course, you know, from there, the, the story just continues. But um, obviously, she stuck with it. And she stuck with me. And we did it. We did it together. We rocked out. See, that right there, that's key. Right. And I love the dynamic between you all being able to see what it was like for her when she originally approached you versus, you know, your perspective and what you had experienced and what made her stand out. What was special about her? What you know, versus what kind of everybody else was doing. And the reason I wanted to highlight that is because there's people out there who are going to be looking for coaching. Right. And it's like, well, what what do you need to be doing as the person being coached in order to get these results? Because oftentimes, if somebody is offering coaching, more than likely they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? But then there's a, there's a responsibility to the individual who wants to be coached to actually do that work. So, you know, the, the attentiveness, taking it seriously. If you say you're going to be somewhere at some time, actually being there. Right. And then in turn, because Jasmine put that energy into you, it supercharged you and she got even better outputs. Yeah. The, the interesting thing is that I didn't know that, like I said, she was going to be like this. So when she came in and she's like, I'm with you, like I want this. It, it literally, as you as you say, supercharged me and it it actually made me a better coach. Right. It, because I was then I went from having a maximum of a 30 day program to now I've created a, a five, six month program because I had to continue to uh, get better. I had to continue to be a better coach so that way I can continue to teach and then she can continue to have results. Um, and I mean, obviously, as we went through fasting together, you know, we weren't we were doing all different kinds of things to make sure that we hit our, our goals, um, which, I mean, pretty difficult to do. Yeah, well, y'all made it look like light work. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and here's the beauty of it. You, you have a man, you have a woman, y'all are both ha having similar you know, issues or similar goals, and you were able to have the same results, right, in real time. And that's the, that's the part I really wanted to stress because people be like, well, it worked for you, it worked for her, can it work for me? Yes, if you do, if you do the work, if you, do the, if you get committed. So we know the starting, the starting point, we know where you were mentally, uh, we know what kind of got you into your process, of the, the five month process. Now we're gonna start getting into the nuts and bolts of it and figuring out like, what's some of the things that, you, you know, Steven had you do, Jasmine, or what's some of the things that you all even did together to, to make this outcome a reality? So I guess I'll just ask Steve, when you very first started, what was, what was kind of the plan? What was the game plan? So when we first got started, there were, there's things that I teach with my coaching. And one of the first things that I teach is the why. And the way that I have it set up, it's a little different than, you know, I've seen other people do. I didn't take it from anybody. I, I created it based upon my own personal experiences. And what I, I looked at what I did wrong or, or what I, where I learned um, where my mistakes were, how can I learn from them? So then I created a, a why that is structured to help you on multi levels when things get the toughest. Uh, so your, so your why is one of the first things that I, that I teach because it's going to help motivate and drive when times get the, uh, get the roughest. Uh, after, after that, then we really look at, uh, eating. So dietary habits, um, prepping, so we're going to be talking about fasting. So how do we prep for a fast? How do we get into that, pro into that process? 
Uh, and then uh, around week, week three, week four, then is actually fasting. So the first two weeks are really working with mindset, working with your, your, your diet. Uh, and then the second two weeks were particularly the beginning of the fasting period. Uh, and you got to have an arsenal because each person that you work with is going to be a little different. So I had an arsenal of different styles of fasting that I can use that would work well for each individual. And it just so happened that the, she was so motivated, she can do what I was doing, which was we just go hard. Um, so, it, uh, so, so then from there, you know, after those first two weeks on week three and week four, uh, then we really got into the fasting period. But that's how it started. Beautiful. Okay. Now, Jasmine. We heard, the, we heard the blueprint. Now, what was it like for you being on the receiving end of this information? I know that you had spent some time and you've had a level of success before you started working with Steve. Um, how did you benefit from this blueprint and kind of what did you think of it as you were walking through this, these steps? Um, everything that I did, it was, you know, super helpful and transformative. So. Um, the why, just each of the exercises that I did, I really, really like dug deep within myself so I can create just like a very powerful overarching why. We had a, a spiritual aspect, um, mental and physical. So within that, you know, three different things under each of the categories and then a overarching theme. So um, that was probably one of the most powerful exercises that I did to know why. So when, you know, times got tough, depending upon what the toughness was, I could go to a certain why, like, okay, I'm going through this. Let me read my mental whys and just remember why I'm here, why I'm doing this, why I'm just not throwing in the towel, why, you know, I already have my day one. It's not going to be a one day in the future. I'm going to keep going. So I always referred, you know, back to that. Um, I got a whiteboard um, because that was highly recommended from Steven. And um, on my whiteboard, I, you know, I had my whys, like all of them written out. So like every morning I would see that. I had it in my phone. I had it, you know, in several different places. So I would never lose sight of, you know, the ultimate goal that I was looking to accomplish. So that was a, um, that was a very, very, helpful, powerful exercise. And because I really spent the time and um, really took my time in formulating it, um, it, it made it, you know, so much better. So, you know, a lot of people, they think they know what their why is, why they're doing it. It's obvious, right? Like, I want to lose this hundred pounds or, you know what I mean? I got diabetes and I want to get rid of diabetes. Those are the surface level things. It's really interesting because underneath those surface level things, it's like, wait, but how, how did you get to the diabetes? How did you get to the place of being overweight or dealing with, you know, the, the different traumas? And it's like, when you start digging deeper, you expand on your why and it's like, you know what I mean? I wanna be, be self-confident, right? Because losing weight is losing weight. You could still be, you know, still have issues with confidence. Yeah. But if your why goes deeper and you're like, you know what, I want to be self-confident, then it's, it's a much richer why and it'll help sustain you, I think. Okay, so after the, after the first, um, you know, kind of the, the setup for this, where were you mentally when you, when you were getting ready to get into the fasting? And then, uh, Steve, I'll ask, you know, how long were y'all planning to fast? When we got into the fasting, actually, we talked um, Sunday, November 1st for the first time. And I decided, you know, then that I was going to start the next day. So I just kind of hit the ground running starting because I already knew the um, fasting process and everything. So when I did start, I, November, it was a 14 2 so um, mentally, I, I was ready mentally. You know, I had already kind of, I, I, my mindset was there. I had already decided before I had my first conversation with him, I said, you know, it's time for me to invest in myself. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, no holes barred. I'm going to go all the way in. And um, so mentally, I was 100% like, I'm 
was so committed, you know what I mean? So I just, I believed in myself from the beginning that I, I would, like failing was an option. It wasn't about, oh, let me try, because I don't even use that word. But it was just like, I'm committed, you know, let me know what to do, I'm gonna do the work. Uh, she, she, uh, she stole my answer. Uh, Chris was going to ask me a question about the time frame, oh. but she stole it. So it's okay. You're, you're very efficient. So it's all good. Um, as you, you see, she's very efficient. But uh, obviously, we started off with a 14 too. So when she came in, I was already, uh, so I lost my, uh, I was 100 pounds in six months. She was at five months. So I was already rocking and rolling. So we were doing some, uh, some fasting with the group. Uh, we were doing some fasting in the singles group as well as the regular AHA group. So I was already a month in. So when she came in, she was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm ready to go. So uh, we started off with a, a doozy, a doozy. So a 14-2, 14 days fasting, two days break, 14 days fasting. Um, and we, we rocked out. And then from there, I was like, yo, she's not playing. Um, and uh, of course, we, you know, we continued. I continued to teach during that time. And she continued to have success, and we, uh, you know, we met every week. We we talked throughout the week, answered, uh, you know, answered. I answered a lot of questions, and um, I, I just things just progressed from there. Beautiful, and I'm glad you explained the 14 too, because a lot of people don't know what that is, uh, and and th that's understandable because these are these are these are things we developed, right, um, <laughs> Steve was the first person in AHA history to ever do a 14-2. And this was back when he did his first 100 plus pounds. You know what I mean? So, so we, were, we were learning. Why did you decide to go with the 14-day fasting, two-day eating program? Uh, so just in, in general, like when I first created or this, this one particularly? Uh, for this particular one with Jasmine. Um, because I was, ready to, I was ready to rock this thing out. Um, I had... You know, I'm not trying to steal your shine or anything, Jasmine. But when I came when I came back and got started, right, the video that Jasmine saw that wanted to, that got her to want to join, uh, I was very motivated uh, because you know I had some things that happened in my life that caused me uh, emotional things, emotional traumas that caused me to gain a lot of weight. I didn't just gain weight just because I wasn't just eating right. I mean, I wasn't eating right, but I wasn't eating right just because I didn't want to and I didn't care. It's because I had a lot of emotional trauma. Uh, and then I started to, I dealt with a lot of that. And then I got to the place where I was ready to start now working and losing the weight again. Uh, I got very frustrated. You know, I was dealing with a lot of shame coming back to the AHA family and now being, uh, you know, over 300 pounds again. And, uh, you know, I was like the poster child for AHA for a while. And it's like, oh my God, I got to come back. And I, I really was to the point where I was like, you know what, Chris, I'm just going to wait. Let me get this weight off and then I'll come back and they'll never know. Um, but coming back and then saying, you know what, I'm going to help more people if I just tell them what happened and, and, and then rock this and then get the weight off again. I'm going to help more people by sucking up my pride or, or, or and dealing with it, dealing with the dealing with the shame, processing out the traumas. Uh, and 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 she, and Jasmine's a product of that. If I did not do what I did, if if I did not get on camera and do the hardest interview I've ever had to do, then she wouldn't be here. Right? She wouldn't be in this in this situation with the weight she, she's at. Um, so I started with the fourteen because it 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 needed to be done. I, I needed something large uh, that was going to m continue to motivate me. Uh, to, to continue to lose weight. Yeah, that 14-2 is a huge Kickstarter because what a lot of people don't realize, and part of the reason the 14-2 was developed, it helps get a lot of weight off up front. You know what I mean? Which just, listen, let's be honest. Now, we've all done quite a bit of fasting, but it is hard, okay? Fasting is not an easy, I'll just fast, yeah, I'll just fast for 40 days. Like, it's, it's, it's a challenge, right? And this is part of the reason why we have all these tools and techniques and we approach it in such a way so that we can make it a little bit more palatable. But, you know, you're going to lose on average about two pounds a day. Now, Jasmine, you're really efficient. I don't know if you remember um, and I don't know if you were even tracking your weight. But do you do you know what your weight like was weight loss was like maybe that first month or 
Yeah, I lost 35.6 pounds. Did you hear that? 30.6, okay? She knows exactly. 35.6 pounds in one month. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, so this, this is a very powerful process. Now, I'm curious about the, before you started working with Steven, did you ever have any type of accountability coach or any type of partner or anything? Were you kind of doing it on your own? Yes, I was. Um, in the past, like I've worked out like consistently for a while and I did have, you know, like workout partners and stuff. But as far as um, the fasting, when I did it for the very first time in 2019, it was just me and me. So I just, you know, it was you all really too, but you know, it was virtual. So I just like felt a part of it. But you know, anytime I struggled, I would refer back to the videos or the AHA, you know, Fasting Academy, which I was a part of or am a part of. Um, so I definitely always used all the tools available to me through AHA in order to, you know, accomplish that goal when I did. So then... How significant would you say it was when you actually, you know, partnered with Steve, you know, became, did the coaching program, like how significant was it to have that, that accountability, you know, uh, what did y'all meet, like once a week? Yeah. How do you think that that impacted you? It was, it was just like epic. I mean, it was just like really, it was just awesome in every way because I just, just knowing that you have the accountability, you have the coach that's so knowledgeable, like the ultimate fasting guru, anytime I would go through, <laughs> go through something, um, you know, I could, I would reach out to him and, you know, he would help me through it. I know there was this one, and most of the time I, you know, was doing really well. I really didn't have a lot of, you know, symptoms and wasn't feeling bad a lot and stuff, but I know there's one particular time, um... I guess it was in December. We were on we were doing a 21 day fast and the water it was just getting to me. I mean, sometimes your body is just like, "Okay, we've had enough." And I just got you know, I just the water came back up basically and I just I freaked out. So I was just like, "Steven." I sent him a voice note like, "This is happening right now. I don't know what to do." You know what I mean? And then he just like hit me right back and was like, "Okay, go to the store." get some key limes, put that in the water and it'll help, you know, make it more palatable. And if, you know, you have to stop, just stop. So just having that accountability, you know, if I didn't, I would probably have to, you know, go back through the videos, which is fine. But, you know, just having that person like right there, that was just, you know, it was super helpful. And then our weekly meetings, you know, I was just continuing to learn, grow and evolve and see just how, the interconnectedness of not only this fasting, it was just I was expanding my mind. You know, we talked about mental things, spiritual things. So he definitely took like a holistic approach to everything. And that also helped, you know, my fasting just go so much better. Mm. So, yeah. See that that right there, that's powerful because a lot of people, they'll be like, you know, they're, they're fasting on their own. And then the thing about fasting is stuff's going to happen. You know, like it's stuff is going to happen. So when something happens, going through the videos can kind of be challenging sometimes. Being able to just have that accountability person or that just that knowledge base, I'll say, and be like, hey, X, Y, Z just happened. Like, what does that mean? Should I be freaking out? Should I go to the doctor? I wanted to talk about some of the exercises, kind of dig into this a little bit more. Uh, because I know what Steve be teaching because he teaches in the 40 day wellness class. But I'm curious, like, what were some of the exercises that you found to be most beneficial? Well, they were, they were all super beneficial, but two that I'll highlight here are one is called the cognitive thinking report. So basically, I had to um, basically flesh out a stressful situation that's happened in my life before and go over, you know, my thoughts and feelings in relation to it, my attitude during the time of it my beliefs and values surrounding it and taking the time to really think back on it, write it out, feel into it and different emotions that came up while I was, um, you know, processing this. Um, it was super powerful because at the time or later after the time, you know, I thought I had 
released it, moved on from it, but I came to realize that I had a lot of, you know, emotional baggage and trauma left from the situation. And, you know, as they say, the issues are in the tissues. Mm. These things were really kind of like trapped stuff emotions inside of me that I had buried somewhere, probably under a lot of the weight. And um, this exercise truly allowed me to release it and I felt like a different person afterwards. And then after I did it, I felt like a different person and then sharing with Steven, you know, one of the um, stressful situations allowed me to release it in a different way till in a different way so um that one was amazing and another one was we talked uh we had a session about like mantras and meditation so we talked about you know the power of words and how words are spells and i am affirmations and you're speaking things into existence whether you're trying to or not but you truly are so we really um dug deep on um, how you say things and, you know, certain words that you don't want to use, you know, don't be in a state of, oh, I'm trying, you know what I mean? Like, mm. eliminate that from your vocabulary or even how some people, they'll laugh at things really hard and be like, oh, I'm dead. Like, no, you don't want to be dead. You want to be alive and thriving. So people, you know, say that, but on a subconscious level, you know, your mind is hearing that and um, that's not, you know, what you want to, that is not what you want your like knee jerk response to be. So um, it was really powerful and we did one for like a daily mantra, one while fasting, which was technically daily and um, one for meditating. So mine were, I am free. That was the one that I said on a daily basis because, you know, freedom, the feeling of freedom is just like oxygen to the soul. And um, it was me stating that I am like mentally free, spiritually free, emotionally free, um, free in every aspect of the word. Also, one was I am brave. So, which is, you know, fear paralyzes you. Stepping into like your power and your light and bravery is super powerful. And even if you don't truly initially embrace it and believe it, you know, the whole aspect of fake it till you make it. Well, you know, that's how I did start it. I faked it till I made it. And now I'm, you know, on this channel talking to everyone and being really brave. And I'm really proud of that. And uh, finally, I am infinite abundance. Mm. So I said that in my meditation, but I also just, I live it, right? So I'm living from a place of abundance. And I know people say abundance is a mindset, and it is, but it, it spans so many more realms than financial abundance or, you know, material abundance. It's just like you want to be abundant in your mind, body, and soul, and you want to know and understand that that abundance originates from within yourself and then it, you know, comes out into the world. So. Beautiful. Be you, I mean, you said a lot there. Like, you touched on so many major points, um, you know, especially talking about the mantras and, and you know, um, your, your, your daily affirmations. It's so important to take that type of stuff seriously. Um, being able to create these mantras for yourself and to, to be able to say them and repeat them, especially early on when it feels uncomfortable, when you feel like you're lying to yourself, like being able to do that and do that consistently shows a level of commitment and determination that honestly, a lot of people don't have. As simple as that seems, like all you got to do is come up with some really powerful reinforcing mantras or affirmations and say them daily. People have a problem doing it. And so I think a lot of times we think in order to get the success we want out of life, we've got to make these big leaps and bounds. And the reality is you don't. You need to be taking these very small steps every single day. Repetition is your friend. Habits are your friend, right? 
they say that, you know, men is ruled by his habits. Well, if you're going to be ruled by your habits, be ruled by good habits. And, and that's what a daily affirmation is. And just like you said, you know, words, words are spells, uh, spelling and, and word magic. You know, you got the, en- the energy in the universe only understands what the, what the frequency you put out. It doesn't understand all the extra stuff that we put behind it. I feel like we, I feel like our original tongue is a concrete tongue, meaning there's no room for interpretation. But the language that we use now is completely open for interpretation. You know what I mean? Just look at math, for example, x equals mc squared. There's not even any numbers in that whole thing. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's how I feel like, you know, our reality is right now. You know, Chris, um, you know, you, you mentioned um, simple. You mentioned little steps, right? Every day, day by day. And one of the things that I picked up through, you know, through, through, my, through my journey, my experience, is that, is understanding that you're not going to make it. Like, someone may be sitting there and they're like, man, Steven did it, Jasmine did it, like, you know, I've seen other people on the channel do this stuff. Like, you're not going to do this by just one day waking up and saying, all right, well, I'm going to get started. I'm going to fast for six months. Like, it's not going to happen that way. It's, it's really about waking up and then every day making it your day the best it can be. Um, you know, one of my, one of my, my quotes, uh, I guess it's my famous quote, uh, is perfection is not needed, but consistency is a must. Like, if you don't have to be perfect every day in your fasting, Every day that you say, well, I'm going to be water fasting for the next 21 days, 14 days, 7 days, whatever. You don't have to be perfect. You can make mistakes. If you make a mistake, that's fine. Finish finish your day, right? And then start back over tomorrow. If you do that, and if you have 6 or 7 oopsies throughout that 21-day period, you're going to have amazing results. But... If you are not consistent, or if you do one fast and then you stop, and you know, I'm going to pick back up in two months, and I'll try, and I'll, and I'll do another one. You're, you're gonna, it's going to take forever for you to really get to your goal. So, perfection is not needed, but consistency is a must. Yeah, and just to chime in really quick, it just reminded me of like Newton's first law of motion. Objects in motion stay in motion. So, you know, objects at rest stay at rest. So an object in motion will continue to be in motion until something, you know, totally throws it off. But you can, you know, quickly get back on track. That's, that's beautiful, right? Because that, that literally, that meshes so well with the idea of being consistent. If you could get some initial motion, and then you be, and then you continue to be consistent. You will continue to build and build and build. Um, that's, I think, one of the benefits of Steve had mentioned earlier that he got into, uh, he started Jasmine and himself with the fourteen two, right? Because that's like, especially when you're new to this process, you, you're kind of excited. You're seeing the benefit everybody's having. You jump out, you knock out, you know, fourteen days, whatever the case is, and then you get to see an amazing transformation. So, uh, Jasmine, outside of the weight loss, we know that you made, you know, did 100 pounds in five months, which is incredible. Um, clearly, there was a lot of, of uh, mental work being done. Um, what are some of the other benefits that you saw from, you know, going through this process? And may- maybe how did it affect the rest of your life? Um, my confidence and um, self-love has just increased tremendously you know I just really feel in full and total control of myself my life my future you know I just feel you know mostly indestructible I just feel you know I just have like a love within myself now that's just like you know I accomplished this so anything else I decide to put my mind to I know you know that I can truly do it and um, it's also kind of helped me um, I've had a passion to start um, a business and that's led me during during you know my five months of intense fasting I you know created a whole business you know um, different products and materials I'm going through a process of getting like um, certified and restored to hypnotherapy I got my mm. real estate license I did so many things during this time period that <laughs> I um, 
maybe wouldn't have otherwise done. It could have just like remained in the back of my mind or on my, you know, bucket list. I like to call it a livid list because, you know, I mean, mm. I don't want to think in the space of like kicking the bucket. Like, let's live it while we're here now. But, um, yeah, the fasting was just truly like the stepping stone to catapult me into, you know, this amazing future and just use the universe as my playground to just create a beautiful life. I love that. The universe, the world, is it's really all in the palm of our hands. And I feel like the conditioning that we go through as children, right, that initial conditioning from zero to seven years old helps to mold us and makes us believe that we are so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. You know, the world does not revolve around you. Um, what you do is not going to have an impact on the greater whole. And these are all lies, but they're mantras. They are affirmations that we are repeating to you know, our, ourselves and each other in order to make us feel very small and insignificant. And essentially what it sounds like is this process of fasting has helped you to restore your natural um, inclination to be a creator and to be in control of your life. Uh, I mean, golly, like so, some of the things that you did... <laughs> Are amazing and and I love your heart because the desire to want to help others, um, the desire to learn, uh, the the ability to have an open mind. I think these are all keys to being successful in life. But definitely, if you're if you're dealing with any type of program, whether it's coaching, fitness, finance, or otherwise, like these are tools that you need to be successful. Because it's like people have these blueprints they built. And, and when someone's like, yo, how did you get to where you wanted to be? It's, it's very hard for individuals to follow these blueprints because they don't have like these fundamental tools. Um, so w one thing that I wanted to throw out there because we're kind of talking about benefits of the fast and all that type of thing. People always say, Chris, I need you to ask everybody that you interview. I need you to ask them how much did they how much weight did they start with? How much did they lose? How long did it take them? And do they have loose skin? Right? Like, these are the questions I got to ask. So let me just ask you, uh, Jasmine, you've lost about, what, 140 plus pounds over the course of X amount of time. Did you deal with or are you dealing with loose skin? I am not. I have not experienced any loose skin during my initial 40 pound weight loss, nor the five months of losing losing 100 pounds in five months like uh through the water fasting and the dry fasting my skin has literally like tightened up mm. like, i'm tighter than i was when i started so <laughs> blue skin here it, you know the funny thing if i can add something to that please the funny thing is is that um it's, it's really good to get two different two different views so you have a, a woman um, who was, you know, almost 300 pounds, who had no loose skin, uh, and then me, uh, almost 400, and then losing an exorbitant amount of weight, over 160 pounds, right? First, my first round of uh, my journey. Uh, and then not having loose skin then, right? Going through a process of gaining some weight back, uh, and then losing 100, still no loose skin. Uh, it, it just really just goes to show that with fasting, with water fasting, dry fasting, it is the most optimum way to lose weight if that is what you're looking for. Like some people look at fasting and they're just like, well, I just don't understand. Like, is this good? Is it not good? It is the most optimum way for weight loss because you're literally just removing yourself from the situation. You are saying, body, I'm going to give you the keys and I'm going to let you do what you want to do. I'm going to let you determine what we want to be as far as our size. Your body is a very intelligent organism. It will let you know and it will determine what size it wants to be. It, it ultimately wants to survive as long as possible. So if your body says, hey, I need you to be 110 pounds, it's going, it, it will drop you to 110 pounds. If it says, well, I need you to be about 130, right, 150, 200, whatever that is, it will regulate and make sure that you are where you need to be because it wants to survive, mm. right? Take yourself out of the equation. Think about it as its own entity. It does not want to die. It doesn't want to be in pain. It doesn't want, it doesn't want to do these things. So when you take yourself out of the equation, 
right? Don't focus on what you're putting in you because a lot of times people are like, well, you gotta, you gotta take this smoothie, you gotta take these pills, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Well, hold on a second, let's change this. Let's focus more on not what we're putting in us, but what we're not putting in us, and then let the body do what it wants to do, and it will miraculously mm. heal itself. You see, the, the funny thing about the body is that it's self-regulating. Big surprise. I always found it interesting because when you look at animals in nature, um, wolves, bears, gorillas, whatever, they don't have high blood pressure, they don't have diabetes, they don't have cancer, they don't have autism. I mean, these animals in nature now have none of these issues. Oddly enough, the ones we have chosen to domesticate now have diabetes, now have obesity, now have blindness. Like, they have all of these issues. Not to mention, a lot of the animals in nature live exponentially longer than the ones that are domesticated. And I say, well, what's the difference? Well, what are you feeding your dog, right? You feed your dog dog food. In nature, it would never get that. It would eat what it naturally is supposed to eat. And the reality is we are eating dog food. We're eating the human version of dog food. It's processed food. We're not eating what we would naturally eat. And so therefore, we're developing all of these extra diseases and things. So by removing yourself, like Steve said, and just letting your body do its thing, it will start to self-regulate. It will bring the blood pressure down. It'll bring your cholesterol down. It'll reverse the insulin resistance on its own. So I love that point. Um, I wanted to talk about what I call the dark side of fasting, right? And this is where, you know, you, you go down this road and, and dark doesn't mean bad. It just is contrast. You have light, you have dark, you have summer, you have winter. All these are necessary. But when you take this journey, there's a commitment that you're making to yourself and you need to be serious about that commitment. And I wanted to ask Jasmine, did you have any experiences with what I would call the dark side of, of the journey where, you know, you've done everything you're supposed to do and now you've got to this goal and maybe you have strayed a little bit from the path after the fact? Yes, there, I did have one incident in particular after my five months of fasting. Um, I came off of it, you know, I did the refeed properly. Um, so probably about after day seven of, you know, refeeding with like, you know, high water content fruits, hydrating juices, salads, smoothies, things of that nature. I was just like, man, I just kind of want to go back to some old favorites just to try. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted some pickles. So, and I'm like, oh, they're only five, 10 calories. You know, it's not going to make much of a difference, but it did. So I had a few pickles spheres and I don't know how much longer later but like I look down and like my legs are swollen I'm just like have overloaded myself with sodium and back in the day you know I could probably have had 10 no problem nothing but meanwhile like having two it was just like oh no you know my body was like no we don't like this so this is what we're gonna do so that's what happened because I, it's not like I was reverting back, but I was just, you know, trying to ease some, a few of my face back then. But because I had detox for so long, because I had mm -hmm. cleansed my body so much, it just, you know, I was basically almost probably in homeostasis, but I took myself out of that by, you know, having the pickles and like I said, my legs swole. So, um, but with the power of dry fasting, within two days, I was back to um, normal, so. Yeah, there's a, the funny thing is, is that I had a very similar situation, uh, Jasmine with the pickles, and for me, it was like dairy. And I don't eat a lot of dairy, but every once in a while, somehow, it just finds a way to sneak into my diet. Um, and it's usually cheese, right? It's not, it's not milk, it's not like yogurt, it's cheese. And uh, if anyone out there knows, then sometimes cheese can be a little hard to give up. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, if, I, if I eat some cheese, I will just blow up. I'll get super inflamed, uh, I'll, I'll just, or what people call bloating. 
Uh, and then it, and it's, and I have to fast if I, if I want to get it off or, you know, if, you know, I have to eat a certain way. Um, but really it's my, it's your body telling you, listen, I don't like this. And when you go through these periods of fasting, you, your body gets very clean. It, it, it really like cleanses itself out. And then when you put something back in it that it does not like, it's going to tell you. And everyone's a little different. So I can eat pickles. Doesn't bother me. Obviously, Jasmine, it, it bothered her, right? So we have to, you know, there is no cure-all or, 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 you know, everything was right for the goose is right for the gander, is what they say. Um, so you have to go through the process of listening and paying attention to what's happening. And you can't pay attention to what's happening if there's all this noise that's happening inside of yourself. So... Imagine being in a football field and there's all these people in the football field and you're trying to have a conversation with somebody. It's going to be super difficult because you can't hear them. Mm. Well, fasting clears the football field, right? It clears the stadium. And now it's you and the other person or you and your body. And then now you can hear what it's saying because you clear all the noise. Ooh, that's deep. I mean, I just, I, I, literally listening to it and I see the stadium and I'm, I'm sitting there next to my friend trying to have a conversation. And this is something I talk about often because we've been living in these bodies for 10, 20, 50, 60 years and we don't have a relationship because we can't hear them. Some of us aren't even interested in listening, right? And then those who do want to start building this relationship, they're misunderstanding what their partner is saying and so there's all of this miscommunication happening. And I love how fasting resets the body. It gives you an amazing baseline. Because I used to hear in the group all the time, yo, just listen to your body, listen to your body. And that's good, but it's like, but y'all don't know how to listen to your body. And that's where it becomes dangerous because, you know, people would think that they're hurting themselves. Imagine, Jasmine, if when you, let's say that you had these, you did the fasting, boom, boom, boom. You had your pickles and you didn't have the guidance. You didn't have the understanding that you got from, you know, going through Steve's program or you didn't have the ability to reach out to Steve and be like, hey, something ain't right. Like, what, what's going on? Maybe you were just completely on your own. You could have easily ended up with the um, water retention in your legs. Then you run to the doctor. The doctor is going to give you steroids. He's going to give you water pills. He's going to offer you surgery. He's going to further damage you because all of those things are toxic. And now everything that was just a simple miscommunication now becomes a huge problem. And I see this happen so much. So I, I just feel like that's, that's very, very key. And I appreciate you all um, you know, honing in on that. So Jasmine, you, you mentioned earlier about how you, you know, this whole process was an investment for you. Like, could you expand on that? Like, what, is it, what does it really mean to invest in yourself? Or like, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I, I decided to invest in myself because I knew the process would be very powerful and transformational. And, you know, I didn't even look at it as a cost. I looked at it as an investment, but sometimes people always look at the cost of a book, a coach, a course, but no one considers the cost of being in the same place one year from now. Mm -hmm. So I personally feel that costs way more than, you know, investing in an amazing coach, an amazing, you know, 40 day wellness program, you know, amazing AHA, all of it. So, um, being in the same place one year in one year, it's just like, I mean, that's stagnation at its finest, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like um, the purpose and process of life is growth and evolution and learning. So it's like we're here to become the greatest versions of ourselves. So if we're continuing to wait one day, one day, one day, you know, make one day, day one and, mm -hmm. you know, get the party started. Yeah. So. Listen. I tell people all the time, <laughs> time is your most valuable resource um, in the sense that it's not something you can capture. It's not something that you can st store up for the winter. Like you can't, it's not like money. You can stack it up. You, you have a day, you have 24 hours. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. 
So wasting an entire year after year after year is, is so expensive. Like, just think about it. Imagine a billionaire, right? He's 55 years old. He has conquered the world. He has flown to Europe. He's flown all over Africa. He's, he's experienced it all. He's had all of the finest foods and women. And at the age of 55, he is laying in a hospital gasping for air because he has lung cancer. How precious do you think all of the potential wasted time of his past would be to be able to recoup that time or to be able to replay that time? And, and this is why I say that health is wealth. Because at the end of our life, when we look back on everything that we've done, these guys aren't talking about all the money they made, all the women they slayed. They're talking about, you know, wanting to spend more time with their family or even having a family, right? Pouring into their legacy and, you know, wishing that they would have taken better care of themselves. And, you know what I mean? They're not talking about their billions like, yeah, I lived a great life. I've got $15 billion in the bank. Like, they would trade all of that money for that time, whatever that was for them. And this is where we, we end up dying with regrets or even living with regrets. So uh, that was extremely valuable. Thank you for sharing that. Now, one of the things that um, I mentioned earlier that really, really impressed me about you and just in general when I deal with people who are, are looking to learn health and wellness is your genuine desire to share this information with other people. And you shared with me some of your business plans, um, things that you have set in place in order to help other people. So I'm just curious if you could just take a moment and just expand on what it is that you want to achieve, your business, and how you want to help others. Yes. Um, I've started my online business. It's called Jazz Up Your Life, holistic living for the mind, body, and soul. So, you know, the goal is let's go on a living spree. You know, mm -hmm. let's um, interconnect the mind, body, and soul. And let's take a whole holistic approach to your life and bridge the gap from where you are now and where you want to be. So um, my goal is to, you know, go on this journey with people, help people, assist people in manifesting their full potential or realizing it and knowing it and, you know, embracing it and bringing it out of them through education, enlightenment and empowerment. So... That is the goal, that is the plan, and that is the forward direction that I'm moving in. Excellent, excellent. Yo, Steve, I'm curious. Did you, did you know that she was developing this, like, throughout this process? And if so, like, what, how did you feel about it? Um, so, I mean, obviously, during this, this time, we got very close. Um, we, we talked not just about, obviously, you know, fasting, but, you know, we had conversation about everything. It was a, it's a holistic program. So we're talking about um, relationships, past, present, previous, whatever, right? Future, we're talking about emotions, we're talking about uh, traumas, we're talking about dramas, right? It, everything. So I did know that she was, that one of her goals was to be a life coach, and then she was already working on things. And... Um, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna share some stuff she don't want me to tell, I don't care. But she just was, she, there was a, there was a, um, one of the things that she wanted to particularly work on uh, was that she felt as if she wasn't there yet. Cause she was like, well, I have all this stuff going on, but you know, where I'm at physically, I feel like I'm not there. And I was just like, listen, there are people out there doing great things that are not there yet. Right on a spiritual level, we are all trying to just figure this thing out. No one really knows what's actually happening. No one knows the real right direction. We just know that we want to get better every day. So when I found out that she was actually her goal was to really be a life coach, it was just like, okay, well, I'm not just going to teach you, of course, about fasting. I'm going to then open the playbook and I'm going to teach you stuff that I know. And then I'm going to teach you things that are going to help you to be a better coach. Uh, so I was giving her information and tools and knowledge about coaching in and of itself so that that way she can, of course, not just learn, but, you know, also just add these things to her uh, repertoire, her tool belt. So that, that way she can take certain uh, items 
and then teach other people as well. So I was 100% behind it. I, I absolutely love the idea. I gotta be honest and say that uh, Jasmine is probably one of the most impressive people that I have come in contact with, have the pleasure of knowing. Um, as we look at the, from the perspective of someone coming into our community or you know just um, coaching with us and absorbing the knowledge and applying it like she literally is the embodiment of the application of knowledge uh, we had the pleasure of coming down here to Atlanta Georgia and speaking with her and you know what I mean we're out, I'm out here she's got some water on the patio she's got fruits and vegetables everywhere she's juicing and so uh, I feel so confident not only because she got an opportunity to train very closely with Steven for the past five months. But also the fact that here I am in the flesh and I'm seeing all of the things. I mean, shoot, not to mention, I just saw Jasmine in Cancun back in like March or something. And this woman is still slimming down. Like she's still making progress. And I just think it's so impressive. Um, what what has it been like for you since you kind of stopped the coaching program and you know at this point you're you're kind of what in a maintenance or you do you have weight loss goals or where are you at yeah right now i am in a maintenance mode i do have uh more like kind of toning sculpting goals um that involves you know going to the gym kind of really like working out hard but um yeah, so just really to focus on toning and I'm, you know, maintaining my weight I'm pretty much like 50 to 60 percent raw with like fresh juices, smoothies, salads. And I am also, um, you know, kind of doing intermittent fasting here. Well, I do practice intermittent fasting on a daily basis, but as far as like, you know, I'll do a three, three day water fast or three day dry fast here and there. Um, just to maintain, so. I'll tell you what, I came down in, it was in April? End of April? Yes. End of April. Mid-April. Mid Mid-April, okay. Mid she, she knows the dates. <laughs> she, I came down mid-April and uh, to Atlanta because I wanted to visit family and of course I got to see Jasmine while I was here, obviously, why not? Uh, and she took me around the city, showed me a whole bunch of sites, all, everything. And I came, we got back down here um, today for the interview and I literally was like, you've lost more weight. Like, and she was like, well, are you sure? Like, I haven't been on the scale. I'm like, yes. Like, you look better now than you did even then. And she's not really even pushing hard. So it just goes to show that when you get to the certain point and then you're maintaining, right, your body starts to level itself out even more. And it starts to get more comfortable where it's at. So the longer that you maintenance and stay where you are at or you're comfortable, then the body will level itself out and, and do more things. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't even realize what she looks like. But I just saw her and I was like, you look better now than when you just finished that long stint of fasting. Because the body just starts to kind of level itself out. It's like, all right, we're cool. We like it here. So... It's working. What a what a foreign concept. So you're telling me that you do all of this work for five months. You really put the your best foot forward, and then because you like created lifestyle changes, you continue to progress and get better. And it's kind of seamless at this point. Like, yes. how crazy is that? Yes, it, it works. It works. All right. Well, listen, Jasmine, I want to make sure that we get all of your contact information, because at this point in time, I know for a fact people are going to want to get in touch with you. So with that being said, how can people find you? How can they connect with you? Give us all your social media. OK, so I'm on Instagram. It's J-A-Z-Z dot U-P dot Y-O-U-R dot life. L-I-F-E. Um, Facebook, same, Jazz Up Your Life. Twitter, Jazz Up Your Life. Pinterest, Jazz Up Your Life. And my website is www.jazzupyourlife.com with two Z's. Hey. Hey, and catch her on at MySpace at Jazz Up Your Life. <laughs> no, okay. I, I, hey, listen. Jazz up your life no matter where you go. I love the name of it. It really resonates um, when you actually think about what it, first of all, it's an amazing play on your name. But second of all, when you really think about what it is, like you could tell there was a lot of thought 
put into that and effort because it really is cohesive with what your your goal is, your mission statement for your company and your business. So um, and that intention, that level of intention, that's the reason why I believe that you have had such an enormous amount of success in such a short period of time. And, and let me just say that what you've done is incredible. It's not necessarily easily duplicatable, but you have an amazing blueprint and I see the notes that you've taken and I see the application so we know it can be done the question is, for th those out here kind of look, listening, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to invest? I actually had a, a consultation with a, a man that I'll probably be working with here over the next few months. And he said that in his, in his life, he's had many success, uh, financial success and things that more material success. And he realized that his health has been put on the back burner. It hasn't really been a priority. And the reason he wanted to talk to me is because he's at a place where he's ready to make his health a priority. He's even letting one of his businesses go in order to have the, 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 the um, time and the energy that is going to need to be taken into, you know, getting some gains on the health, like getting that health bag, right? And I just, I loved that. I love that passion. I love that drive. So uh, for those who are out there listening, listen, you have to get on that same wavelength. It's not about, you know, half doing it and trying, which is, you know, like attempting without ever succeeding. I don't know why anybody would want to try anything. You have to make a decision that you're ready to get change and you want to be a better person, have better outcomes, and it's possible. We got the blueprint. So I just want to tell y'all, listen, hit up Jazz, hit up Steve. I've got plenty of programs. Y'all already know what it is. Uh, this has been an amazing interview. Is there anything else that either one of you want to say before we kind of close it out? Um, I have a quote, one of my favorite quotes that I would just like to share with everyone. I think it's kind of like a nice um, ending and a conglomeration of everything that we've discussed. So it is by Marion Williamson um, from a book that she wrote called A Return to Love. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of the universe. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of the universe that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Mm. Man, I just had to close my eyes and just, that, that just took me away. You know what I mean? I especially love how she talks about, look, when you are on your path and your light is shining, automatically you just inspire others to, to be the best version of themselves. People often ask me, Chris, you know, I'm on this health journey. I want to I wanna get my brother on. I want to get my mom on. I want to get my spouse on or whatever. How do I do it? And I always tell them by being that example. You know what I mean? Because that's the way energy transfers, you know? And so um, I really, really appreciate you sharing that with us. Listen, y'all, if you liked this interview, I need you to hit that like button. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, because we do this, this is what we do, I need you to subscribe. And as always, <laughs> the application of knowledge is power. And we'll check y'all out on the flippity flop. <laughs>